Wednesday after a heavy emotional game and maybe later in the week. But if you think you're going to build it on Saturday or Friday afternoon or Friday night, I think you're crazy. And I think some people have the um, impression that you can do that. And they think that I'm some kind of a Looney Tunes salesman mm -hmm. when I try to tell them <laughs> that they can't. But uh, slowly and surely, I hope some younger kids will learn this. But it's been a tough situation. Some of our kids think that they can just wander on the field and play and everything will come out fine. And unless you're mentally prepared, unless you're really into it, you can't do that. I don't care how good you are. And only a few teams, and those are the superpowers, get away with it. Otherwise, you read about the upsets of the week. Now, knowing about your club's uh, tendencies emotionally, after the intermission, as you walked out onto the floor uh, for the second half, where was your head at? Did you think these kids were going to respond emotionally? Were you worried? What was your, what was your attitude at well, that Well, I point? was deeply concerned, but then I thought, well, we'll take our chances in the third quarter because if we don't take the wind in the third quarter, by the fourth quarter, we may not be able to do anything about it. So we took the wind and said, hey, defense, let's see if we can stop and get the ball go down and get on the board once or twice and now we got ourselves a dogfight and we're in a football game and the defense responded. They got the football played well and three downed them and out and we got the football back and couldn't do anything with it. We just, that probably was the most disappointing thing of all was the inability of our offensive front to turn the football game around for us and that's who needed to do it. We had to turn around with our front because we were having trouble catching the football. We didn't do that very well. We needed to punch some people out and we didn't get it done. So it was a defensive effort of note in the second half of football, but an offensive effort that was earmarked by frustration as we Back see. Back after this, knowing we're trying to get on the board and we stumble right as we're going in for the catch and the interception comes out, it's close, but they come up with the football and, and all of a sudden we've got another turnover. We turned the thing over three times yesterday, which in the entire first nine ball games, I think we turned it over seven times. This is a third and 11. Stall hits Frederico for 23 big yards to the 39. As they continue to move the football here, Maurice Foxworth, however, with a good defensive effort. Yeah, That's a nice job by Fox, and he breaks the thing up, and, uh, and now we're going to get the ball back, but the thing rolls dead on the one, and it's a fine punt by the kid, and could have rolled in the end zone, but it didn't. When things are going the way they were going, that's how they always go. And it's up to you to turn the momentum of the ball game around and make something happen your way. And it's not going to unless you do something. We just couldn't get it done. But even at this point, uh, Illinois State, not the type of team that is so intimidating and so overwhelming that you don't think you can get in and steal a football game. No, they're not going to overwhelm you because they're not an overwhelming team. But you have to make something happen yourself. They aren't going to give you the football game. Here the ball hits their kid in the side as it rolls and bounces right up into their punt returner's hand. So it didn't seem like we were going to do a whole lot to make anything happen. Here's Wilson popping for seven yards up the middle. A nice little change of direction. Ball comes loose, but you know who recovers it. Yeah, they come up with it again. And... Some strange stuff. Like you say, nice play here by Donnie Weatherby, but... Some isolated fine plays right. is really what it boiled down to. Some individual efforts, but not a very good team effort in any way, shape, or form. And now he's kicking the ball with the wind, and he misses that one. Wide from 28 yards, so the chip shot no good. 12.09, now you got Dave Cruz in at quarterback, and here's the future of Wichita State, and the kid showed some uh, some fine flashes and uh, so, some indiscretion, perhaps, but that's what you expect. Well, it was, you know, one of the few times he's been able to play. I thought he stood in there pretty well, and he's throwing the ball into a pretty stiff wind, which doesn't make it any easier, and I thought he stood pretty tall and did a decent job of it. He, he wasn't able to move us enough to get us in the end zone or to get us close, and they almost bust one here coming back against us. And this is as we're beyond the halfway point now, I think, of the fourth quarter. Watson comes up, though, to make a nice play here as Waters tries the left-hand side. Nice yeah. individual effort by the freshman. This is good individual defense right there. Drive stalls, and so it's the field goal kicker again from 45, and this time from almost two times the distance that he missed from last time. He hits 26 to nothing to score. That, of course, would be the final, but not before Cruz and Walker hook up a couple of times. Here it's going to be a gain of eight. He comes back and hits Gary, and finally get a completion it took us long enough we get one that actually one of our receivers catches and so we do get an eight yard gain on it Jose comes back and picks up five and we move the ball a little bit but we're not able to uh, stay with it and that's about the story of the football game didn't seem to make any difference who played it was going to happen the same way because the results were already in the can for some reason Nice defensive play by Donnie Weatherby again, who had a couple of nice tackles for losses in the contest. Cruz showing some nice poise here, hits Walker for 11. He did a nice job of placing the ball there. He got the ball over a linebacker underneath and got it down to Gary Walker, and it was a good play and came out pretty well. And Freddie Gaines comes on the little draw. Does a pretty good job with it. 
13 yards, I think, and probably the longest individual gain of the day. And then David comes back and makes the mistake and gets the ball underneath and throws the inner. So 26 to nothing, the final score, and certainly a poor effort to be sure by Wichita State. But coach, it comes after three weeks where you played very emotional football against three very good football teams, in all likelihood better football teams than you played yesterday afternoon. It just goes to show you that uh, Wichita State is the type of team that, as we talked, when you're firing on all cylinders, you can be competitive with just about anybody you step on the field. But when you drop down, you drop down to a level where these types of things can happen. Well, there's such a fine line for us between being pretty good and not being good at all that we can't afford to ever go below the line. That's extremely difficult to do, and it's difficult to handle. I'm just displeased that, that we didn't adjust a little better and that we didn't do better with it. The, the thing that bothers me perhaps as much as anything is we have 10 penalties yesterday. For the entire first half of the or first nine games of the season, we have 27 penalties. Mm -hmm. We had three turnovers yesterday. For the whole first part of the season, we had seven. We haven't been a turnover team. We haven't been a penalty team because we've, we've worked so long and so hard on it. We thought that this was one area that we could handle. Mm -hmm. And when things go bad, they just go belly up on you, and that's what happened. So it was, I guess, in retrospect, one of those afternoons for what that's worth. 26 to nothing. We'll take a look ahead when we return to the Ron Chismar Show. A week from Thursday, Fresno State, uh, a fine, fine football team, the best in the PCAA. What are you looking for from your kids, Coach? Last ball game, national television, you got an opportunity here. Well, I think it's a chance for our kids to go out with a little bit of pride, and I think it's something that they have to rally themselves and get themselves ready to play, and everybody wants to play on TV, and here's their chance, and it happens to be against the third-ranked offensive team in the nation, so it'll be quite a challenge for us. And you'll see all the highlights right here two weeks from tonight, 11 o'clock on the Ron Chismar Show. For the coach and my co-producer, Kevin Hager, I'm Bruce Hurdle. So long, everybody.